So welcome to Authentic Sicily. I'm Chef Joe Simonera. I'm Vincent Buter. And for the next 13 days, we're going to be exploring Sicily, a place that thousands and thousands of people have enjoyed throughout the world for great food, great history, and, and great ingredients. about cheese making in Sicily, where we're gonna focus on the spectacular cheeses of Sicily. Oh, uh, we're gonna visit the farms where you'll get a first-hand lesson on making a variety of sheep's base cheeses such as regatta, tuma, and pecorino. And really, we're gonna learn about the dishes that are made from these cheeses, uh, from cannoli to cassata. Exactly, and you know, we're gonna also visit a farm, Vince, in Ragusa to understand why the cacio from this region differs from the cacio in Lazio, such as Rome, and how it's aged in caves. I think, you know, wines always come into this. We're gonna be pairing local wines with the cheeses that you learn about so that we, we understand how they're doing it here in Sicily. All right, Joe, we're still in Ragusa, here in Sicily at Ragusa Latte, which is where they make cheeses. Absolutely. What's going on here now? We're gonna take a look at all the cheeses, yep. but I see these giant vats. What is this? Yeah, well, these are the holding vats that's Vince for the milk. Now what happens is there's a farm right over here which they have something like about 2,500 cows. Wow. <laughs> and in the, in the, you know, every now and again they'll get milked. It'll go into a big vat on their side. They'll pasteurize it. Uh, and then what'll happen is the trucks will come here with the milk. They'll hook up to these hoses right here, get put into these holding vats. You see there's pipes. They go all around the facility. That wow. way they can just let the milk go. And everything is done with milk. There's no water here as far as making the cheeses, where a lot of companies cannot, will actually mold mozzarella with water. This company uses straight milk. Wow, this is the real stuff, the authentic Sicilian cheeses. So the milk goes inside. We're going to go inside. We're going to watch them make regatta. We're going to watch them make exactly. mozzarella. We're going to see all the cheeses they make here. And then we're even going to go out and see the cheeses aged and, uh, exactly. and ready for Salt cured. OK, great. Well, let's right. take a look at that, all right? Let's go. All right. So now we're here getting ready to check out how regatta is made. We have this big 5,500-gallon container. Vince, that's what's happening now is they're boiling the second stir of the curd, which will rise up to the top. That's going to be your regatta cheese. Now, it's very loud. There's a lot of action here. You can't stop production. <laughs> In order to get the regatta, it has to heat up to the temperature, and it floats to the top only once. If we don't skim it right away, there could be a problem. Okay. What you see right here, Vince, is what I call the impurity of it. Sometimes it, likes, it has to be scraped first. Some people do it, some people don't. As you can see, he's kind of just moving the foam over. And you see the regatta coming up. Vince, this would be considered the second stage. We're gonna walk over to the next room and do the first stage, which is the making of the mozzarella. Excellent, I Let's can't go. wait. Let's go. So we're here at phase one, which is how they actually make the mozzarella. So Joe, I see a Absolutely. lot of water in here. What's happening? Well, you know, typically when people make mozzarella vents, uh, like this gentleman was saying here, uh, they use water. Some people try to cheap out, so to speak. They use milk. And by bringing it to the natural, kind of where it came from type of thing, it produces a much more creamier product. Okay. In here, what you see here is milk, and they're heating it up, getting ready to put the curd in. It's not exactly in there now. These, these bats here will move the curd around and separate it and make it elastic okay. so that they can pull it out through there and it goes on into sheets, and then they mold it into balls. So this, this, when you put the curd in, these things kind of stretch it out like Exactly, uh, they move it, they stir it, make sure that, you know, nothing. Okay. Again, steam injected here, so the steam, this is this is hollow, the steam goes throughout the side of the vat to heat it so up. So the phase one, we make the mozzarella, and then it goes, what we saw just before, was the regatta. Exactly. That's the phase two. Exactly. Okay. So now we're gonna head over now, and provare questa mozzarella, mangiare. Viene, vero. Sì. We're gonna, go eat. Eat We're gonna go eat some mozzarella. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well. You, you read my mind. All right, sounds good. Let's go walk over. Okay. Okay, we saw them mixing the milk. Now, I know something's gonna happen here, Joe, that actually makes the cheese, or Absol makes the curd, absolutely. I guess. Now, Vince, take your arm, dig in there, and grab some of this curd. I can do that? Yeah, you can do that. My arm in there? Go ahead. Antonio. <laughs> oh, my God. You feel something weird? Yeah, yeah, wow. Now, what you got there is curd. This is the very beginning stage uh, making mozzarella and ricotta. If you if you don't have this product, then you can't make the second. Wow! Trip. Wow! So this is the first stage. So now, how do you get to this? What makes this happen? Good question. 
There's, there's, we're going to give you an example. In, in the U.S., there's a couple of ways to en add different enzymes. In here, they're adding a well-known enzyme into this milk that's going to, to come together the calcium plus the protein to form the curd. Okay. So, and, and this should happen almost instantaneously. Okay. All right, Vince, so now we're taking up the enzyme called the cayo. It's uh, made from the animal okay. itself. And as soon as we add this into here, we're going to start to see the curd form almost instantaneously. What's wow. going to happen is going to bring the, uh, the calcium and the protein together. It's uh -huh. amazing that this enzyme will do that. So that's what's poured into here, and uh, what I just put my hand in, that's, what, that's how it works. Exactly, it. now okay. you can see it thickening. And okay. that is exactly, that's how we make the curd. Okay. All right, Joe, so what's happened here? Something went into this machine, I see the mozzarella starting to take form, exactly. what happened? You know, because they do so much volume here, they have the actual machine to take the curd, and move it into this vod here, which, which turns it, and is, make, is stretching it. That way they can form it into a bowl. So this, when it turns it, it's it's creating the texture that we, exactly. we see but mozzarella in? There, now there's a time limit here. You can't overwork it or else then it, the mozzarella gets tough. Oh, okay. So let's walk over here. We'll check out the final product. Okay, great. And so this just came out of the machine. It's still warm. Exactly. And what they do, Vince, is they mold it like this and pinch the top. Remember that long thing that he had? Yeah, sure, sure. He made it into a bread. It almost looks like a hollow bread. All right, and this is and this is how it looks. So you go from the very... There's a lot of stages now that we know from mozzarella. There's the curd. Right. It's the making of the curd. It's the boiling of, of the actual mozzarella. This is the first stage. That liquid then is brought into that room to be boiled again and cultivate the regatta cheese. And that's the regatta, the second boiling. Exactly. And the first boiling is this. And, you know, they, they never throw away that water. So right, it's right, always... Right. You know, there's no waste here, so you're seeing it from the scratch. Right, right. Antonio, come on back in here. Thank you so much. Grazie. And also, grazie. look at how good looking this guy is. He's a, he's a male model, mozzarella man of the year. Faccia bella. Grazie. Grazie, Paisan. All right, so now we're here. We're going to learn a little bit about how, to, how, to, how fresh regatta is cultivated. Now, we have my friend here. Come on, say, Paisan. Giorgio. 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 Um, and then through the process of letting it sit out and then being refrigerated, you have your ricotta. This is amazing. This is just an old wood burning. Old wood burning stove. furnace, wow. uh, flat stove. You can see he's got this hooked up to a pulley. He probably at some point will pull, pull it and probably slide it over somewhere else. Okay, that's it. Come on. It's amazing. Yeah, I never knew where Gotham was made. I'm like a ginger. This. All right, now, Vince, we talked about uh, forming it by hand and then forming it in a loaf pan or uh, some kind of a... Uh, so the, what we just maker. saw was he formed it by hand, they put it in here, right? and uh, they put some wood in here to get the shape right. Exactly, they get okay. the wood shape right. And then they walk over here, it's put into the salt water for 24 hours. Now this is about 18 hours right here. But so, as you can see, it's, 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 it's holding its shape pretty well. I see. This is the 24 hour point. The cheeses are ready to be taken out of here and then given to the curing facilities. Okay. So the cheese leaves here and goes to the curing and aging facilities, exactly. which we're going to take a look at now. Right. We're going to see how the cheeses are cured and aged now that we've seen them made. So let's get in the car and head over there. Let's go. All right. Okay, we're here at the Candido Cheese Aging and Curing Facility. Now, you just saw we were making the cheese. We saw how the whole process worked. We're here with Mario Candido and Gary Portuesi, who will be interpreting for us. So, Mario, the cheeses are made, and then they're put in uh, the vats over here for aging. 
Sì, eh, qui avviene la salagione primaria, cioè il formaggio viene dal, dai caseifici o dai produttori e viene immesso in una soluzione liquida di sale al 28% della scala Baum. Sì. Ok, so the cheeses are brought directly from where the cheeses are made and they're, they're submerged in a salt, a saline solution in these, um, these vats. Ok, so, great. What, uh, what's the next step? Lo sì. prossimo passo? Prossimo Let's passo. Go. Ok, eh, anzi questo. Ma abbiamo completato ancora. So tell us what's entailed in phase two. So they're, they're hung to dry um, using a natural fiber. They so ferment for about 30 days and they hang here for two or three months and then we go to phase three. Correct. Okay, well let's take a look at phase three. This third phase, um, this, this goes through the machine, this um, scrub brushes uh, with a solution of water and it actually scrubs free any kind of residue, any kind of mold. So now is this actually, is this ready to be consumed? This is restaurant or house ready, so to speak? Ready to eat now, um, but it's not, it won't be ready to be graded, to be used for grading purposes until, for about another six months or so. Well, you definitely satisfied my cheese hunger. What do you think, Vince? Absolutely. All right, on to the next spot. Okay. Hi, I'm here with Anthony Gizio. Anthony, thanks so much for joining me here today. Thank you. Uh, we're going to do a little wine and cheese pairing, uh, but first we're uh, talking about Benanti wines, right? And Benanti, uh, they're very unique wines because their grapes come from Mount Etna, the Mount Etna right. region. Right, and, and anyone you speak to in the Etna region will tell you that Etna is an island within the island of Sicily. So right. we're, not, we're not in regular Sicily here. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the, uh, the different Sicily. Exactly. And it's the altitude, I suppose, and the... Uh, Volcanic the soil, air. altitude, a million factors. It's all the French call terroir that fall into, to come into play with these wines. Right. Um, I will say this, though, for the first one we're going to try, we're actually going to Siracusa, which is another Benante property in the mm -hmm. south. Okay, fantastic. So and we have here Port Il Drago. Il Drago. Uh, cheese. Why is cheese important in pairing with wines to begin with? Why do you even use cheese? Why don't you use you know, something else? Well, I think it, it all goes back to um, you know wine, wine's agricultural foundation, and everything that's on the farm uh, comes from the farm and goes with what's made at the farm. I so see. I think you know cheese from the animals that are you know eating in the vineyards nearby and the fields. So it's a natural progression. Absolutely. I like cheese. Don't get me wrong. I I'm hope not, you I'm do. not questioning the tradition here. I hope you do. I just didn't know where it came from. <laughs> and when you're pairing wines with cheeses, just in general, for, for you know, sort of a, a regular guy like myself, because right. I wouldn't know, I right. know where to begin. You know, what, what am I looking for with types of cheeses and types of wines? What, what, what's some of the simple it's tips? Great. Depending on the, the type of milk used, you'll, you'll have, you, you could have different signposts, like different, different go-tos for cow's milk is mellower than sheep's milk and sheep's milk is mellower than goat's milk, per se. Okay. But also with the wines that you're going to pair with them, you want to try and uh, add, the, you know, if you're going to have something spicy like a pepata, you look for a wine that has more spice in it. Okay. Um, a, a creamy cow's milk cheese, you want something that's a little lighter and more fruity. Okay. Um, there's a, a movement lately where people are pairing more white wines, fromagers are pairing more white wine with cheese, but here in Sicily, red wine is the wine of the island. So okay. we're going to do, we're going to go, you know, national style here and say so we're going to do red wines, three reds with three different cheeses that are very, very local. Perfect. And these, you know, you mentioned the cheeses, they're local cheeses, great cheeses here in Sicily. What do we have specifically here? What type of cheese is this? The first one that we're going to pair with Il Drapa, which is 100% Nero d'Avola from mm -hmm. the south, is this beautiful Caccia Cavallo, um, which locally they call Provola, but it's the same cheese and it's, um, in, in the States you'll usually find it as Caccia Cavallo. Caccia Cavallo. And it's 100% uh, cow's milk. It's very, very creamy um, at different stages of aging and you'll you can see this has actually got some age to it, a little bit of a, a drying around the rind, mm -hmm. but uh, they can be served creamy, creamy white, fresh, or as they age, uh, they get drier and drier and more golden in color, a little more browning coming in from the sides. Okay. Now, my last question before we actually do this is, do you eat, take the cheese before? Or do you uh, you drink the wine and take the cheese? Was it? It's uh, a great question. Is it? Does it matter? I'm going to say taste the cheese first okay. on its own. Okay. Then take another bite with the wine and see how it changes completely. Because every time you taste the big red that has tannin, which is an all red wine, that bitterness that comes upon you after you sip uh, needs fat to break it. So okay. I'm going to say take a bite of the cheese. I'm going to do just we're, that. <laughs> we're going to take a little bite here. Okay. Um, just a little one. Taste okay. it on its own. Mm -hmm. You taste it's creamy, soft. It's a great cheese, um, very light. Not very salty, very light, mm -hmm. right? Now take a sip of the wine and see what happens. Again, 100% Nero d'Avola, Il Drapo. Okay. From Syracuse. It's a gorgeous wine. Nero d'Avola, the indigenous grape of Sicily. So this has got a little more body to it, or, or what would you call it? It, it, it was a... Yeah, it, it, believe it or not... the softness of the cheese with... Softness of the cheese, but, but among the reds here from Sicily, right. Nero d'Avola is actually one of the 
fruitier, softer reds that you could put, ag put against mm -hmm. cheeses. Um, Nerodavlo is often compared to Pinot Noir, to put I'm, it in context. I'm enjoying it, I'm going for more. You get that beautiful <laughs> garnet color, and it's not, it's not overwhelmingly powerful. Okay, excellent. All right, Anthony, we have our second wine, and uh, we're gonna pair that with the, oh, the cheese with the kick, right? Yes, so we have, um, we have this, again, the Pecorino Pepato Fresco. Right. Peppercorns in there, we have a little spice. We're gonna take it up a notch with a wine. We're gonna use the Mayora, which is a blend of 50% Nerodavlo with Petit Verdot, Syrah, and um, just a tiny splash of Tanat. Okay. And uh, this... Uh, what is Tanat? Tanat is actually a French grape uh, used mostly as a blending wine, but it's actually found a new life in Uruguay where you actually find bottles of 100% Tanat. I just like the word. Tanat. <laughs> yeah. Tanat. Because it doesn't sound like it's every, no, all the People will know grapes. that I know my wines. So I'll just say, a little touch of Tanat. There you go. You sound like a pro now, man. Thank you. All right, so again, we're gonna taste the cheese first. And then after you, after you swallow, then taste the wine and see what happens. Okay. So what will this completely. cheese do to my palate, though, in, in comparison to the wine? What's, what's happening with this cheese and why you paired it with this wine? Okay, so because it's sheep's milk, it's going to have a little more pungency to it. Right. And then you right. have peppercorns that add a real kick to it. Um, and then the wine should make it come together really beautifully. Comes together, does it mellow it out, or it just kind of blends with that it, type of flavor? I think it tames the peppery tames spice. Tames that, okay. Okay, but that's right. my, that's just... No, like, listen, that's unqualified. As you've said many times, it's it's uh, it's all in the individual taste to this. Now, obviously. if I'm going for a plate like this, I'm going to go for the peppercorn. Okay, so no, go, please. It's every man from self here. <laughs> you I'm gonna, take yours first. I'm going to grab that one. You take yours first. This is great. Great Sicilian cheeses. So, eat it first. And uh, creamy, but here comes the spice. I got the peppercorn coming. And it tastes like beautiful wine. Mm -hmm. I'll do the swirl. Mm, you're absolutely right. You know that cheese. Well, I I bit into that peppercorn like right. in my like seventh chew, and uh, <laughs> it kicked up a lot. This wine didn't cut it out, but it balanced no, it. I think so it's, yeah, these are like mine. They're, they're so now I'm getting that. Now I'm, I'm kind of getting the philosophy now with the cheese and that because it really it did it neutralized. Right, you don't it just make the it. cheese disappear because actually right. on the on the finish it's they're really they're really. It, it actually made the cheese everything just the whole thing tasted better. It's almost yeah. like you. Yeah. You really mix it in your mouth a little. I like it. I still get a pungent pop at the end, so I mm. should accomplish on this one. Excellent, and this wine is fantastic. Okay, next we have the Ragusano, which again, I, I teased it. It looks very benign and, and, and plain, but it actually packs a great, great amount of salt. It's a cow's milk cheese um, from Ragusa, but it's, uh, it's actually made with a, a great amount of salt, right. and it really comes through on it. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a little piece here. Okay. Grab one. Now again, we'll go through the same thing. I'll take a little bite first. Yeah. And then take another bite and then have the wine with sure. it. Yeah? Yep. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. The very, nice salt. very salty. Mm -hmm. um, drier than it looks, which is actually because the salt dries the cheese. Right. A little tighter than you'd expect. Right? Then take it again with the, with the wine. I get this too, but they both have two flavors that are coming in here right. that, that worked well together. As opposed to... Uh, this cheese, this is a, right. the, what's this cheese again? The Pecorino Pepato. The Pecorino, yeah, that they, they sort of offset each other a little. This this became two flavors that... that uh, it's just like how humans meet. It's either right. like minds or right. birds of a feather or opposites attract. It right. You can go either way with one Hence pepper. the name of the, uh, the wine. La More Mio. Yeah. What I like about this, so one last thing I'm going to say is if you think about how you put salt on food to make flavor pop, the salt in this, this cheese really makes the wine pop completely differently than it tastes on its own. And right. I get a lot more of bright, youthful cherry flavor that really I wouldn't have seen if we had tasted this by itself or with a piece of bread. Oh, that's really interesting. Anthony, this has been a great experience for me since I had no idea how to pair cheeses with wines. And I really appreciate you joining us as well. It's, My it's pleasure. Been, it's been just great spending time with you. Uh, and so we're going to uh, take it from here to our test kitchen uh, back in New York. So if you're back in New York at any time, I'm coming with you. You are. <laughs> well, join us. Well, cheers. Thank you, sir. Ciao. Joe, we're at the Gustavus Cooking School in Herald Square. Absolutely. Great place. Nice. And we're with uh, Michael Wilson, Editor-in-Chief of La Cocina Mike. Italiana nice Magazine, right? Yeah. Nice to see you. Vincent Beauty, good right. to see yeah. you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. You guys have done some uh, great work uh, in and around Sicily. I think sure. we were reading in the article. Absolutely. And, yeah. and we're going to make yeah. one of those dishes from the article? We're definitely going to make one of these dishes, Vince. Uh, it's a swordfish dish, and it's got a lot of great ingredients. Uh, something that I like, which is really a marriage made in heaven, swordfish and sun-dried tomatoes with black olives, right? Great I mean, does it get any better yeah, than that? Yeah. Now, we were at the markets in uh, Catania, 
oh, where yeah. they brought the swordfish in. We were at the markets all over Sicily, watching yeah, the sure. swordfish come in. They're, you know, they have to keep the head of the swordfish out yeah. to be sure and prove, by law, yeah, to prove that they're fresh. Yeah, and they're exactly. sort of standing straight up. Yeah, they're standing market. straight up. Yeah. I, I couldn't yeah, believe it's, it. It was crazy. Yeah. It's really good to see stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So we are cooking with uh, swordfish today. This is a center cut, Vince. So, okay. I mean, there's steaks, there's center cut, but this is right in the middle of the swordfish, which, which is what I like to do. And you got to kind of cut it out. I mean, it's the only way. So you just cut around like so. Now, some people will serve their swordfish like this. This is what you normally see, this half piece here. I'll okay. cut it out so I can show you a little bit better. Are you a big fan of swordfish, are you? I love swordfish. You know, most people, sometimes they'll tie it. Me, I just like to cut it down just for purposes of what we're doing today. We're going to use two pieces, but maybe again, I. Let me do four. We got some hung hungry do people four. looking at do us. Four. I don't want to get jumped after the, the shoot. So Listen, Michael's got a lot of people at La Cucina Italiana that want some of this. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I was even warned on the side, you know, hey, remember this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get my swordfish. Don't really. But your, your crew went from uh, Chef Falou to Syracuse, so yeah. they did a lot of coastal yeah. uh, They did, surveying. And, and, you know, an inland route as well. But um, Sicilian swordfish is... is some of the best in the world, and yep. it's, it, I, it, absolutely. They, they, they sort of, the swordfish themselves sort of funnel through the Straits of Messina up there where the island sort of meets the, 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 the bottom of the boot, Right. and, um, and they fish them there, so when you're up near Chafalu up in the north there on the coast, you find just the most amazing swordfish coming, you know, coming in so fresh right off the boat. Every day we were at a market, we yeah. saw, you know, swordfish out there, tuna yeah. too, and, and a yeah. few other things, oh, but yeah. swordfish was always the one. Yeah, swordfish was always there, though. So what are you making here, Joe? Well, just you know, I'm just kind of cl uh, cleaning the swordfish at this point, and then, you know, it's important to season it, so we just want to take a little bit of salt. That's sea salt? That is sea right. salt. Use the sea salt. And we watch them bit. harvest this. It's amazing. Yeah, it yeah. comes in through little basins along the sea. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it is amazing. Exactly. So what we want to do is always try to kind of keep your hands somewhat clean and different from any raw items that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a really hot pan here. There is a trick to searing fish, especially if it's not nonstick. You just want to take a little bit of oil and you want to take it off the fire. You want to make sure that the pan is really smoking, smoking, smoking hot. And just put your oil back in there like that. But we have a, a good amount of oil. We're going to take the swordfish and put it right down. Now, the reason why I, I took some of the oil and put it out is so it doesn't splash in our face. Yeah. But the pan is still hot. And what we want to try to achieve is this. You see it's not sticking? Yeah. That's how you, you, you get fish really hot. And you don't want to put it right back on the fire right away because you don't want it to burn. But by keeping it off to the side, it's not going to stick. We're going to get that sear, and we're just going to wait a couple of minutes to kind of talk about what, other, what else we're going to put in there. Now, we've had swordfish or different fish with pastas. We've had them made oh, yeah. uh, either separately sure. with other things. So what, what is the sort of the unique Sicilian twist here with this dish? Um, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think there is a twist to it. Okay. I think it just is uh, just perfectly Sicilian. Swordfish quality swordfish. Capers, sun-dried tomatoes, olives. I mean, these are the, these All the are ingredients, ingredients yeah. that, you know, are, are sort of part of Sicilian culture. I mean, exactly. and they have been forever. Capers are in just about everything. Yeah, they are. And um, they, some of the world's best capers grow on the, the caper bushes in Sicily. Right. Um, the, you know, um, in Pontelleria and Salina. Pontelleria, Salina. And, yeah, those are the places to get them. Very Salina. familiar area. Yeah. Yeah. And also in Pontelleria, place. they have some of the best sun-dried tomatoes, too. So, uh, you know, and in these, this, I, you can have a little bit of everything. You have are the capers bit. salted, the ones we're using in this recipe? They should be packed in salt. Okay. That's usually better. Most people in this country seem to buy them uh, that are in a brine. Right. And those are fine. But generally speaking, the capers that you can buy in a jar that have been packed in salt that's the uh, best way. Uh, or the best yeah, way. The best. And authentic. And, and, yeah. The Sicilian, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Well, and, you, and either way, you have to rinse them before you use them. You have to take the salt off. So you don't recommend, like, Vince just with a piece of, or like a loaf of bread on the Mediterranean, just popping those things out without... <laughs> Well, I recommend it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we visited. <laughs> we went to Selena, and, and we did some of that, I have yeah. to say. All right, guys, I, I just, you know, put the basic stuff in there, sun-dried tomatoes, uh, black olives, capers that we just talked about. And as you can see, I flipped the fish over, and now I'm ready to start cooking. Okay. As you can see. You know, you never want to overcook the fish, so we're going to lower this. We've gotten the sear. We, we're not sticking. We want to throw a little bit of dry oregano like the recipe it calls for. A little bit of crushed red pepper. Put it in there like that. Now what I like to do is just deglaze it with a little bit of wine. Yeah. I thought maybe you could get some wine glasses over there yeah. for us, Mike. Uh, the right. three of us well, will have a little toast. That. Yeah. Absolutely. Ah, I was waiting for this. Wonderful Sicilian Woo! wine. It smells good. 
all guys to authentic Sicily. Great, great country, great yeah. people. Sicily is like a country within itself, within Absolutely. Italy, isn't it? It is, it is, and it's uh, and Etna's, and they say Etna's an island within Sicily as well. Absolutely. It's amazing how, many, yeah. how diverse it is. I'm gonna throw mine in there like so. I hope you guys don't mind. You can throw that in there, I'm drinking it. <laughs> and this is great with, with red wine. A lot of people might think, oh, it's just this and you should use white wine, and, and actually, this is this is a dish, and uh, and it's great to it's great eat with, with red. red wine. It's you know, to deglaze it with red wine. Wow. You're absolutely yeah. right. Now, the final touches here, butter, and we're just about done, guys. We're going to let this cook down, raise the heat a little bit mm -hmm. so we can get a nice sauce. Vince, can I have a plate, please? Plate coming. You know, Joe, once again, another dish we're seeing made that took a couple of minutes to make. Exactly. All these great fresh ingredients, all, all healthy, organic, simple ingredients that you can find. Simple. In, in Sicily, they're pulling these out of their, their yards, but uh, it, it just for those folks here, your, your recipe kind of calls out things that they can buy here that exactly. maybe oh, aren't, aren't available. Exactly. We, we make sure that, that all these things are available here. All right, now at the point now we start to see really thick bubbles here. You see with this butter, we're just gonna, it's gonna disappear in a minute. Is this like a, like, like a sauce you're putting on? This or is, is it actual sauce. So I mean, while I'm kind of cooking down nice, I'm gonna take some of our ingredients that we place and just put them on top here so they kind of hold a little structure. And we got our sun-dried tomato, we got our onions, and this is a real simple, easy, quick dish. It's okay if they fall off the side. Now what I wanted to do with the, with the sauce here, Vince and, and Mike, was just get it really thick. As you can see, it's kind of getting thick. I want to take yes. the, the capers there, everybody at home. Try this when you have Vince in the kitchen. <laughs> this way, if it doesn't work, he'll humor, humor you with his comedy. <laughs> We can't laugh ourselves through this, Joe. This is a serious this thing. This is very this serious. Is Sicilian cooking. See how nice and thick it got? Yeah, yeah. Now, if we go too much, it'll break. So what we want to do is take some of the sauce, put it right around the side like that. Wow. You know, we, you know, we, we put a little color here on the side like that. You, you know, you don't want to go crazy. You know, don't overpower it. You really we are a chef. a little bit over yeah. the side. <laughs> you really are a chef. Uh, you know, it's the first time I'm, I'm co ever cooking with fish. This is the first time I've ever done it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, here you have it. So that's my version of what I saw out of the recipe. But I mean, Mike, I mean, you, as usual, you do a great job mm. as really locating these mm. incredible recipes, and we just duplicate them. Yeah, you did a fantastic job. Well, guys, you know, <laughs> or at least it looks, it looks that way and smells looks, that way. Let's try to, so yeah, try to, to taste, taste it. and get in there. All right, let's see what the fork says now. Yeah, okay, that's the right. real let's, test. Let's the fork's got to right. talk. Are you, you I'm jumping in? on the side here. All right, all right, I'm down over here too. Chefs typically take a, chef, a step back and just watch. You want to see our reaction? Well, we like to be able to run to the door in case it's <laughs> yeah. not, not what everybody thinks it is. That is fantastic. Good. Is, right. is the fish nice and tender? You know, we, the we fish didn't leave is it in extremely there tender. Long, so. mm -hmm. It's got a little kick to it too. I can feel. Uh, would you put in uh, the crushed red? red yeah, pepper. the crushed red peppers. Yeah. But the sauce is so light and and, and tasty. Great job. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. it. Well, guys, Perfect. Uh, thanks for coming on the set and uh, cooking with me again. Sure. And uh, for everybody who wants to learn more about La Cucina Italiana magazine, log on to lacucinaitalianamag.com. And, of course, Vince, for our show, authenticfoodstv.com to learn about some episodes, some yep. recipes, and, you know, Vince's comedy. Mike, mm -hmm. thanks for being thank on the you. show again. This was great. Vince, always a yeah. pleasure. Oh, you bet, man. Mike, good to see <laughs> thank, you, too. Thanks. We'll see you thanks. folks in and around Sicily. Exactly. Yeah, great. And when you want authentic foods, make sure you try Authentic Sicily. Ciao. Folks, we have covered the entire island of Sicily over the course of the last 12 days, but you don't realize that the people behind the scenes that really made this happen, I, nothing could have been done without them. We've worked on four or five hours sleep every night. Don't we all look great? I think we all look pretty good. And I want to acknowledge everybody. So starting over here, Justin. So anyone handling the sound, if you listen to the sound in this show, you're going to love it because Justin was the man every step of the way. Beautiful Melissa handling the makeup. I don't normally look this good. She's made me look like a million dollars, if I do say so myself. Thank She's a you. natural, natural. Mm -hmm. The man behind the B-roll and a lot of the camera work. So when you see all those great scenery shots and all that panning, Zach. And really the glue of the whole operation here, making everything come together and work, is my man Johnny, who produced, he shot most of the main scenes. And I just want to acknowledge you guys, you were awesome, thank you so much. It's been 12 days, I feel like a rock band. And we'll catch you <laughs> next time on Authentic Sicily. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.